Hey, welcome to the Do Good Work podcast. Today, we're going to be diving into a one-on-one on leadership, you and I here. So let's dive into empowering your team to avoid burnout. And burnout is real. And from a personal journey, you don't know you're burnt out. And so you take a vacation and then you're like, wow, I was burnt out. So sometimes we know it or we're going through the thick of it. And uh, we, we know we're burnt out. And other times we just know like, hey, something might be off. And until you take a break and a pause, you'll realize that you are actually burning out. So that was at least for me, my realization. And I think that as you lead a team, it's a huge responsibility. Being a leader isn't something that I, and, and I know words can just be light and whatever, but in my opinion, that it's a huge responsibility to be able to lead other people because at the core of this responsibility is mutual trust. Trust uh, from me as a leader or from you as a leader to trust in the team to execute and in return, earn trust to orient the team in the direction that is mutually beneficial for them, for the work, their impact, and the overall business outcome. Because it's not just a one-way street and it's not just, oh, you're doing this work because you have to meet your goals. It, these all have to align. And I believe a true testament of a leader is not only aligning that, but also creating other leaders. And going back to aligning the work that is actually being done, the work that actually benefits the team member doing the work that actually benefits the impact the community or to the global cause, and the work that goes back to correlate to a KPI or a business outcome. So I think for leaders, uh, the way that I've been seeing, at least in the um, in the digital space or for not as mature leaders, we, we could take this for granted. And we get slapped in the face when reality hits us. So I want to make sure that we don't take this for granted at all because out of, out of that major responsibility, we do have to create the alignment that I mentioned earlier. But the alignment really when it comes to a tactical approach in your leadership is to focus on the initiatives of the team or the department or your company, ensuring that you have the right roles in, for that team or for those initiatives, that, that each team member is taking the right actions that those right actions are being communicated and that communication is following a certain process that all aligns back to the activities, to the roles and the initiatives. Because if we don't have alignment, then we will experience burnout because burnout does stem from a multitude of different factors. And we can't say all those factors here because the human mind and the humans are more dynamic than just here's a series of lists of diagnoses of burnout. However, there is one factor that I do know heavily influences burnout and one that I personally care out the most for not only myself, but for my team is that burnout stems from a lack of control. And I'll say that one more time. Burnout stems from a lack of control. So stress rises when there are issues within your team or your company and that you feel that you are unable to contribute to a working solution. In other words, you feel helpless. And when you feel helpless, it can lead to feeling hopeless. That's never a good thing. So if your team isn't completely aligned with what they're doing and aligned with the overall company goals or initiatives, and they're not aligned with their actual action items that they have to do, or the communications, or the process, if there's so much disconnect in any one of those stages that we just discussed, there can be a core issue in not only solving the problem, but also arriving to a situation where we feel burnt out and unable to actually be in control of solving our own problems. So I know this is a very complex matter, and it's not just something that you can solve over a podcast. You probably will have to repeat this multiple times or even work through this with your leadership team or even work through this with your team as a whole in general. But as a leader, here are seven things that I suggest that we can do better to prepare following this framework to help our team and empower our team to avoid burnout. Action number one that we can take is align clear targets for your company or your team or your department. Just very clear targets. What do we need to hit? Action number two is break down every single team or person contributing to this target by their actual function or job role. For example, if you have a larger team and you're leading a whole company, you think about what are each team's contributions to this bigger goal that we have? What's the product team doing? What's my copywriting team doing? What's my development team doing? 
what's my marketing team doing? And making sure that we can break down their contribution to the overall target. Now you have buy-in, now you have relevance in what the team is doing and that they know that they're actually taking action to hit the overall goal. Action item number three is identify within each team the core metric that they own and how that core metric rolls up into the overall company KPI or the company profit and loss statement, the, the master KPI. So number three, again, what is for the sub teams or your department leads or your roles? What is the core metric that they know that they can not only win and reach every single day, but that they can also hold themselves accountable for taking action and reaching a metric and reaching a milestone? That's important. Step number four is identify the clear action items your team needs to take in order to reach their key performance indicator, their KPI. This number four, the clear action items, these are your habits. These are what are the actual actions I do on a Monday morning? What are the things I do on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? What do I do on a weekly, monthly, every two weeks, every quarter basis? What are the things that we have to do as a team in order to make the goal winnable? Because as a company, you have to set goals that you can win. Obviously, that creates stretches, but like this is a winnable game, like play to win. So the action items have to be aligned, like what has to be true in order to reach this goal. Number five, you have to designate a clear owner for each habit or each action, making sure that we know exactly who is doing what. Number six is collaborate with a team in designing a clear workflow for each habit. So if number four is the what are we doing? What are the actions? The actions is what? Number five is who is doing that. Number six is how are we doing that? And then finally, number seven is just over communicate and implement steps one through six with each one of your teams and repeat this on an ongoing cycle to improve and have an improvement flywheel. So as you rinse and repeat and do this once, you'll be okay. You do this twice, you'll get better. You do this three times, you'll be pretty good and work as you become more proficient in this process. So Those are seven steps that I've outlined that I personally work to practice to ensure that we can empower our teams to avoid burnout. If you have any other suggestions or want to add to that list, leave a comment wherever you're seeing this or leave a review or email me at podcast at dogoodwork.io. As always, it's an honor to be a small part of your journey. This is Roland Hernandez. Do good work.